functional is definitely not me, but it is a game of Age of Empires 4. Here we go. Warring Islands looks really weird in a freeway, doesn't it? Kind of looks like a, some sort of logo for a business or something, doesn't it, actually, the more I look at the map. But let, let's focus on the players, because right now you guys are like, I, I don't know who... Who's playing this? Who's happening in this right now? Who's yeah. playing? It's Lenok. <laughs> it's Beastie. It's Marine Lord. But apparently we're keeping it a secret. You need to figure out for yourself which one's which. <laughs> Indeed, it looks like it's going to be in the yellow color, Beastie Cutie playing as the Chinese. And you might be wondering, how is his build up so, so fast? It is because we are using high starting resources. This is a Warring Islands free for all three player, high starting resources <laughs> game with thousand dollars on the line. It's like, it takes two minutes to just list the amount of settings that we have. Oh my God. Yeah, so we, we gave them a lot of resources to begin with. Um, what else was that? Like, I'm trying to think there's a few. So we got Rage Aside. Obviously we're on Warring Islands, which is, going to be an unfamiliar sight because when did we take Warring Islands out of competitive? It's been months. We haven't had it for months. Like day right? number two? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it was that bad. I mean, for, for those that weren't around then and they didn't witness um, what it was, like the, the best way I could describe Warring Islands and uh, Archipelago to you is that you didn't need commentators live. All you needed to do was like put on that, that ice skating song, you know, the dun, 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 <laughs> dun, 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 dun because all you were doing is watching boats elegantly spin around in circles. I mean, if we didn't have DMCA issues on Twitch streams, we could put on some banger music behind, so you can just see those ships dancing and spinning, and we can just sit back and watch as we listen to the music. <laughs> Damn, we you know, and, and we shouldn't really be giving this info. Actually, no, we're safe because DMCA protects us. I was about to say, Pesty could save a lot of money off of casters, but you know, Spotify <laughs> subscription is cheap, but obviously DMCA not so cheap. You know what? Let's uh, let's focus a little bit on, on what we got here because some people are probably confused. Like, oh, do we need to introduce the lads? We we know who's in this one. We said it. We got BC. We got Marine Lord. We got Lenok. And before you go, what civs are they playing? You may have noticed something by now. China, everywhere. Yes, of course, it is going to be Baoshu and party out there. I'm not even sure how many war junks we are going to see in this battle because you get the impression that this is gonna be full boom into Bao Shuan out there. And as you pointed out, we have Lenok, Beastie Cutie, and Marine Lord as the three players. A thousand dollars on the line in this one because these players, they have already qualified for Red Bull Velo Legacy. So to give them a chance to play themselves in the monthly days, they are now playing in their own special game. <laughs> wait, 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 what? <laughs> is that, is that a king in a village? It is. So he's king of the village, not king of the castle. Uh, so for those that are wondering what we're talking about kings for, this is Royal Rumble. It is a mod that is more or less the same as AOE 2's Regicide, if you're familiar with Age of Empires 2. It's a game mode where you have a king, and if that king dies, you lose. Similar to in chess. And similar to in chess, as when I play at least, I like to hide my king not on the table. I, I hide him somewhere completely different. Yes, I'm, I know, I'm, I'm aware, Lydical, I'm not playing the official <laughs> rules of chess. I'm playing my rules. And that's the beautiful thing about this game mode is, you know, you don't have to park that king in your base. You can smuggle him off into the tree line somewhere. But do be careful because for 400 gold, someone can enact treason and reveal your very location. Indeed, as you pointed out, it's very similar to the AoE2 Regicide, and as you said, you can try to hide the king, but as uh, Core is showing us right now, there's a treason button, and that is going to reveal the location of every single enemy king, and then that specific enemy could be sniped off from his king, because you lose the king, you lose the game. So, of course, you're trying to conceal your king, but one of the things that you have to consider here is that you could just hide it in your town center. But keep something in mind. As you do that, if you accidentally just press the Ungarrison hotkey with your town center, the king will march to your rally point. And that could mean that your king is going to be standing idle in the middle of nowhere, ready to be killed. And for those that aren't familiar with most kings historically, you know, use the kind of King Henry fought process. They like to eat a lot. They eat a little bit too much. They don't do much walking either. You know, they've usually got cavalry, or they've got people carrying <laughs> them around. And as a result, Mr. Roly-Poly Kings in these games don't move very far. So if you do have that accidental waypoint and it's far away, you're going to be waiting a long time for your king to return to safety. Exactly. And that window can be easily utilized by your opponent to snipe the enemy king. One thing we haven't mentioned yet is because this is essentially a pre-show show match that we have before the deciders. We do have a cutoff at the one hour mark 
So if we're each one hour and we still have multiple players alive, we're going to award victory to the player with the highest amount of kills. And holy wolves, that island is stacked out there. Oh. This is the dream of the Rus. It's a shame that everybody plays Chinese here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is this is so Poppy Po. I think he was in the chat earlier going, "How can I get involved in this?" Well, this is as close as you get this weekend, sir. If you win this weekend, though, maybe next time we can talk about it because you will definitely feel at home with your wolf pack here. Good look. What the <laughs> Seventeen <laughs> wolves. No, nope, we're not done yet. Twenty-two, 22 wolves. Oh okay. My God. <laughs> that is sufficient amount of gold to put a Rus player beyond tier 3 bounty by itself. I mean, this is... So, what we didn't rethink... We thought, okay, it's a free-for-all, we've got three players. No, someone forgot to mention Gaia. Gaia has actually been enacted here. That's only one island, by the way. There is a second one to the south that, if it's directly mirrored, will be another 22 wolves. It's a shame that you can't transport wolves, because... These scenarios, you could actually contemplate sending a villager. If this was an open land map with that many wolves, it would be a legit viable strategy to send the villager, aggro all the wolves, send the villager into the enemy base and delete him, essentially sending 25 wolves into the enemy base. I've seen something like that in AoE 2. I've yet to see it in AoE 4, mainly because we don't have maps that have that many wolves on land. Well, map craze. You heard him. Get on it. We're always looking for new custom maps, and then that's definitely one I'd be on board for actually allowing through. And it looks like right now we're about to get into the master of the sea territory. Question mark is who's going to reach Imperial first? Because that's what matters more than anything else. So the moment you get the war junks, which feel pretty good, Rip. but the bow. That, that's a very end. dead villager. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I, I can't. He's got an outpost. I simply can't stop laughing on the fact that this villager is trying to build outposts on an island that is full of wolves. <laughs> No, nope, yeah, but not the best yet. part is he's winning. Oh, oh, no, 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 no! He's not winning. He's not winning. Oh, he's the cost occurs. But BC didn't realize. Whoops. I would love to hear Beast's opinion on how many wolves does he think that island has. Like, if there was a post-game interview, my first question would be, Beastie, give me your approximate on the amount of wolves that the central island has. I just, I, I think at that stage, like, it just seems unlimited in his mind. I would actually like, okay, there's another idea for a cool mod someone could add. What if we just had, like, wolf dens that could be added as locations that kept spawning wolves? Now, of course, the roost would benefit a lot, so maybe we d we don't allow you to get additional gold off the, the new spawn ones. But I'm just thinking, like, something, someone to fight back, you know? I've watched too many maps where all the wildlife gets wiped out. It's time for a, a zoo tycoon situation where someone accidentally deletes the wall to the lion pen. <laughs> Or just add... F oh, wait a second. That's a scout from Beastie Cutie. He's like, uh -oh. howdy, neighbor. Oh, he spots the king even. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not just... So So he sees a lot, actually, because what Beastie done... Uh, most of the time, when you are playing the Chinese, which landmark do you go up to castle with? You want the siege, right? Yep. Beastie didn't do that. Beastie got the Imperial Pass, so he's snitching on every single worker's location on the map. I'm actually way, wondering if that reveals the king as well. It shouldn't, but you never know. I think I think it doesn't, but keep in mind it does also reveal boats. This is someone that kind of doesn't get like highlighted that often because one, we don't see Imperial Palace that often, but also how often do we really see water maps at the moment? <laughs> but yes, you do. You <laughs> that literally can't see be a serious question. <laughs> we got rid of Mongolian Heights. There isn't much left. And when 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 in what world are you ever picking Chinese on Danube? I mean. It's a possibility, but even if you do that, Imperial Palace is not your first option when you go to Castle Age. So yeah, <laughs> exactly, it's it's not something yeah. that you see every day, right? Wow, this is something we see every day. Spirit Way, always and forever. And now it is time for the Bao Shuans to come out to play. Beastie ramping up fast. And I think the other players actually reached this same threshold. I feel like some of them are lagging behind in comparison to this. Yeah, Beastie had a really good start. I think he was the only player that went instant three TCs right next to one another. So his eco buildup was much more rapid compared to the others. And as you see, down south, Linok actually went a lot heavier on the fishing department, but that takes some time to pay off. If you take a look at the travel distance of these fishing ships, it is ludicrous. Mm -hmm. it, it's actually crazy when you look on the map. Like, there are some nearby for good old Linok here. But I think he's more interested in yoinking marine lords away from him, if anything. For, for those that are like strike, uh, kind of strike on their chin, scratching their head, yellow is beastie, red is Leonok, blue is marine lord. 
You know, we had to give the Frenchman the blue. It just made sense. Indeed. I'm actually I'm actually really sad that Beastie is not green, because then we could have RGB colors on the minimap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a gamer, green... I need my RGB. That's true, but green's OP lit actually oh my, my kid, blue's OP here. <laughs> I I've I've got issues. we had this talk before. Okay, green and blue should not be allowed as default colors in 1v1s anywhere. It's so stupid they are. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's a little difficult to spot enemy ships on the water when there is a boot player out there. I mean, we've seen plenty of examples where you just don't notice someone dropping a dock in your pond on Four Lakes so far <laughs> because they're wearing blue. And right now, Beastie is wearing a lot of cannons on these boats. The big boys are stacking them up. And the reason is because he just wants to get eight or nine together and then cruise all the way down Marine Lawn's close, uh, coast, rather, making him scream for mercy. Yeah, I'm actually unsure how big the Navy is for Marine Lord. He seems to be lagging behind, as he pointed out. He's only up to two Baoshans, and this can snowball really fast, because the moment those Baoshans win the first engagement on water, they will just destroy all the docks, and then Marine Lord can't even replenish his forces. Luckily, he's got the Clock Tower, so technically he can add Springholds to buffer this up and maybe just discourage Beastie from camping on the coast. I'm kind of wondering if this would have been funnier if we used Archipelago, just because the <laughs> islands might be small enough that you could snipe the king and he can't just hide in the corner. <laughs> is, uh, yeah, is that evil of me? Um, I mean, it's not evil, it's just the fact that, you know, you might have a 10 minute long game after all. That being said, one thing that Beastie is doing, and this is very clever, he is fortifying the location near that neutral trading site. Oh, look at the wolves! Mm. There they go! <laughs> Yeah, but look, the scout's baiting more in. <laughs> yeah, he's sacrificing the scout. He just aggroes the wolf and he's like, okay, you can have all oh those wolves. Cool. Well, one it, village is definitely at least dead. <laughs> yeah. It was a so brutal and cruel death that Core had to censor it for us, so we did not get to witness it. I, I just hope Beastie's dog isn't looking at the computer screen right now. I mean, I, I would not like I would not feel comfortable with my owner at that stage. The amount of dogs he's killed on this island. And there is more to come. Oh, wait, wait. Did Linox Island have any dogs? Wait, uh, he had were some. Were they literally... Okay, but he must have had yeah, like five are. max, right? Okay, there they are. <laughs> he looks a yeah, lot less, a I don't know, um, interfered with than, than Beastie's Landing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's difficult to have more wolves on an island than what Beastie had, let's be honest. That's true. I feel like uh, a bunch of them learned to, to swim at young age and, you know, they got lost from home and they were paddling around the little Mediterranean. They just took up arms on the Northern Island. You know, they joined the pack up there. The pack that was, at least. And Awkward detail here, by the way. Remember that the person coming last gets nothing. And right now, yeah. as you can see, Warring Islands, there's only two Central Islands. One apiece. Marine Lord is still playing himself in the corner while Beastie and Lenok playing the center. Yeah, and in naval combat, if you have the defensive position, that gives you a pretty decent edge over the attackers, because, wait a second, what is that? Oh, it's Beast just voling off, giving a little castle <laughs> yep. here to the yep. king. By the time the castle is finished, that slow little king is going to get there, even protected by the Great Wall Gatehouse. What a, what a wonderful palace to live in, I must say. Like, I would love to be live there. The keep is closed. <laughs> and now it's even going to get a sentry to guard it on the outside as well. <laughs> so, nice little play there, actually using up the corner. Uh, and he's the only player to do this so far, by the way. We know Linok originally decided to hop into a village. And Marine Lord, I don't even know where he's sitting his king right now. Um, he might be chilling right next to the gold mine. Like, last time I saw it, it was close to the gold mine. No, as Core is showing no, us... No, please, no. I've seen some players in, in Regicide, <laughs> like they, they place their king somewhere and they genuinely forget. Despite the fact that if you look on the left of the screen, there's an icon you can click at any time to go directly to the king. And am I seeing a Fire Lancer upgrade here for Beastie? This is a relatively peaceful game so far. And as Core pointed out to us, Beastie did not go for the Chaser Cannons upgrade on his ships just yet. So he's not focusing that much on water. Instead, he is going to pull off a D-Day landing over here. Biology, Fire Lancers, Elite upgrade also coming in. And Marine Lord doesn't expect this. He doesn't even have eyes set over here. I, I wouldn't even call this a D-Day landing, to be honest with you, Lydical. There's zero defenses. This is more like, I don't know, when the, the Normans came over to take control of England. 
<laughs> I okay, okay, no, I go. I, if if D Day is what it is, I give this an F Day because it's a failing grade in terms of defenses, but it is going to be an A grade when it comes to the offensive because right now Ooh. Marine Lord has no idea this is coming. He has zero vision. Look at the there. bait. Look at the bait though Wait. here from Marine Lord. He's baiting Imperial officers in the town center so that Beast thinks the king is there. The place where this plan falls apart is that treason is still a thing. So what Beast is going yep. to do here, he's going to land, and the moment he does, he's going to pop off treason, and he's just gonna go for the king. Now, the king is in a tower, actually, which might hurt even more, because the Fire Lancers, they can get rid of a tower much faster than they can from the starting TC. Like, 15 Fire Lancers is insufficient to deal with the starting TC. It's more than enough to deal with a fortified tower. Now, if you remember in the pre-game, I did mention that like Beastie is the only one I've seen who's practiced a little bit of Regicide, just out of happy occurrence, really. And he did take about half an hour to discover the treason <laughs> bud. Now, he was in the chat when I said this. He tried to make up some excuse. I still won. No, you still missed it for half the game, though. I watched you. And My there was the treason. Is... He saw it. Oh, yep. You guys could see it. And here's my concern, Lidicor. Like, I don't think Lenok and Marine Lord were in the chat when I brought that up. <laughs> so I don't think they know about the treason button still. Oh, but even if they do, like, you get the impression that Marine Lord, he's trying to bait with that town center, but Beastie knows what's up, and you can't run with the king. Castle not being placed nearby. <laughs> oh, boy. You might make oh, a run for that town center. Oh, wait. Wait, he knows. Wait and he it. blocked it off. He, so when he the body blocks the keep, yeah. Yep. He body box the keep. Villagers being sent to repair. This could be a disaster for Marine Lord. Oh my god. <laughs> He's keeping a lot of them. Look, villager pool. Look at the amount of villagers here. It's going to oh. be good enough for the moment. And it looks like he's going to be able to hold. BC will not get it that easy. And Marine Lord will make sure he has a chance still of not going home with zero dollars. Oh man, this could have been very painful here for Marine Lord. He reacted fast. And when I saw Beast's initial push with 15 Fire Lancers, I was like, ah, oh, this is gonna be tight because 15 Fire Lancers, they need some time to take down buildings. And now Marine Lord is angry. The problem is that Beastie, he now Oops. is out here for blood. He has shown his hand, he needs to fight. And here come the Baoshuan and Marine Lord may have been like, okay, I survived this one, but wait a minute. This is where real hell is being unleashed by the Baoshuans. Wait a minute there's something else that might be occurring soon. Like, I, I see Lenok, like, where's his fleet gone? He was moving out this way before. Did he back off entirely? I feel like Marine Lord shouldn't have just lost that so decisively against Beastie there, unless he was fully distracted on land. It looks like Lenok is just chilling fully back. And with some uh, injuries against his ships there, yeah. it looks like he did sneak a fight Marine Lord, and now he's sneaking onto his island. I think what happened is that Lenok was the one taking down the majority of Marine Lord's fleet, and Beastie's just coming in here for the kill. Marked by the dead bodies around that gold mine. The numbers from Marine Lord are disturbingly low. You really get the impression that he had to fight off two navies at the same time. And now the next wave of Fire Lancers is also coming in. Behind this one, though, Linok is the only one that hasn't taken massive casualties. And I actually am wondering how his resources are looking like. Because if you think about that, you could realistically think about the wonder once you get to a point where there is only two players left. Not spectacular resources, though. Stone's going to be tight to get him there. He'd have to trade for the additional. You know, something even... I'm wondering right now is whether Beastie realizes that he's allowed to build more than one transport ship. He realizes he's that, right? I mean, I mean, he's allowed. It's just the fact that he's pop kept, right? Yeah, you just you got to fight. You got to lose the Bowchads. They're a problem here. I know Bowchads look like they win everything, but if you're on the Fire Lancer strategy, you got to double down on it. It looks like he has <laughs> gone up to about 24 Lancers now, but he does need another transpose ship. In fact, he might not need another transpo ship because Lino might get rid of Marine Lord before he arrives at this rate. He's prepping. This is actually clever because the difference here between Lino and Beastie QT is that Beastie, he sends in a couple of Fire Lancers. They might snipe the king. Let's say Marine Lord goes out. But that army is going to be insufficient to deal with all the keeps, deal with all the town centers out there, right? And what Lino wants is not just to kill the king. He wants the island for himself because... What else you, are you gaining with this island? You're gaining a tremendous amount of resources. That's what you get. He discovered the transport ships. He discovered he had more than one, and now he's setting up the siege workshops as well. Remember, Marine Lord still doesn't know about this. Yeah, he suspects these attacks are going to keep coming, but he hasn't really done anything to repel it because he can't afford anything right now. Oh, dear, oh, dear. 
I think Mr. Frenchman here is going to be going out in third at this rate if this pressure keeps up, unless Lenok draws his attention over to Beastie instead. Yeah, I mean, the question now becomes who's getting the kill here, because there is a keep out here, there are Bombards, there are Spearmen. You get the feel that the Fire Lancers will be insufficient here. The King's actually jumps into the castle from the tower, nice bait by Marine Lord. But the Spearmen, they will be insufficient against the Palace Guards, and Lenok might be the one actually knocking Marine Lord out, not Beastie. Sailing up right now, and it looks like the fleet is pulling back for Beastie, fully aware of what's coming. He doesn't want to engage, he doesn't want to anger Lenok right now. Marine Lord, was he doing something in the central trade point? He's got units over there. He's making some sort He's of sneak towers. move around the back of his ships. Um, he has dropped towers and a keep close to the neutral trade post for a while. He's oh. trying to trade, guys. Guys, why am I trading? I mean, Beastie is trading, and Dude, he can't, can't conceal tell. it. Yeah, exactly. You, you can't reveal it. It's against the rules to chat. He can't go, hey, Lenok, Beastie's the strongest. He's trading right now, and he's trying to rush me on land. No, Lenok has to discover that himself. Indeed, but for now the traders are getting sniped down. By the way, quick update here from the production end of things. Um, looks like Wonder Victory and Sacred Sight Victory are not a thing yeah. here. So you can only win by killing the enemy king or completely defeating the enemy players. So camping on those Sacred Sights, not a thing. Yeah, it only gets you gold. It, it, like every single win condition is disabled other than the kill the king. Even if you lose all your landmarks, by the way, you don't lose because if you actually check a king, I don't think we can check one right now because they're all hiding. But if you were to click on one and hover over them, they're labeled as a landmark. <laughs> Which shows just how fat they are. And that's why they are very, very, very slow. And I know it's annoying people more when I don't tell you the actual stats for that unit. <laughs> yes. Now, given that the king is classified as a landmark, one has to righteously ask a key question here. If you are playing the Rus, do you prefer to age up to Feudal Age with the Kremlin, or do you prefer to just get a king for yourself? <laughs> I thought you were going to go with, like, King needs his castle type thing. I'm like, the moment you start saying build a Kremlin, I was like, I see what this is going. No, 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 never. I refuse to ever, ever build a Kremlin. Unless... Maybe you rush your opponent's base? We don't talk about it, that. I, I still you have avoid... PTSD of that from the last FFA oh, I no. played. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had it happen to your 1v1s though? Because I've seen that as well, and it's it's dark. It's real dark, man. You can't see the sun behind the height of that gremlin. <laughs> Lino. Uh -huh. Dude, he's so cheeky. Not just Marine Lord's Island, he's now trying to find a little wiggle spot on the beasties because he wants the ability to just snipe each of them down successfully one after the other. Yeah, like, Lenok is playing just like the English and the British Empire did for hundreds of years. It's like, I don't want to fight on my own island. I will always take the war to you. I will just land at your island and we're fighting there. If I lose, I will just go back to my own island. That's it. That's true. And, and you know, for us, like, ah, oh, the Scots, the Picts in the north, they're just the wolves in this situation. We're fine. Like, <laughs> we'll be fine on our island. And in fairness, that's a fitting analogy considering Lenok has got the biggest fleet still. And it's an interesting BC. analogy from an Englishman, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to accept it for what it is. All right, I I don't I don't take shame in what we done in doing the Lenok here. Okay, we were just being logically strategical about this litical. That's a nice way to put it, I must say. You could be a good politician. Thank you, thank you. I mean, let's take Hungary as an example. Very Let's difficult not. to defend, Lydical. <laughs> <laughs> he knows his history. <laughs> oh, so it looks like he's sneaking up with the outpost. He won't be able to get the proxy base down, though. And keep in mind that like what Lenok is doing here isn't as threatening as what Beastie's doing. It's just Palace Guard. And you know, they're on the wrong island to find their king, and no king over here needs their protection. I mean, you are saying just palace guard, but then you look at all those villagers with only spearmen guarding them, and you have to reevaluate the situation because Marine Lord probably is not just sitting there thinking, oh yeah, it's just palace guard. He's probably screaming like, sacre bleu. <laughs> Sorry, can I get a repeat on that? <laughs> no. What were the words? <laughs> uh... 
I would do mine, but I've been abolished from being allowed to do that by production. <laughs> and it looks like Linux attack is going to be banned out here as well. It's going to be pushed back for the moment. I think that proxy base is going to get spotted soon, though. Like, this was a very weak pull by Linux. The issue he has is he's got, like, what, nine foul chads still? And they Wee. are, if I recall correctly, I mean, yes. is it six? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so let me just tap the back of Lidacore's head. You back in English mode? <laughs> yes, I am. Good, good. We got we got him back home. We're gonna keep him away from the French. He was good for the German education, but uh, I think Macron is molding just listening to this. I mean, I can understand why. I must say, but it looks like Marie Lord is also gonna start molding very soon when he sees those bombards. Only a handful of fire lancers guarding them, but it's not like there is much left out of Marine Lord's base. And I mean. You can hold that castle for so long, but at one point, you're just gonna get overrun by the palace guards and the bombards from two directions. Now, the, the good news is he doesn't need to die by Baochads because his bombard should be out of reach, but it, that's not really great news when there's a giant land army coming in. It is gonna be good news if you can hold off this attack, though, because Linok is getting active towards Beastie's base now. Yeah, I mean, one thing you have to keep in mind here is that Linok here is playing to win. And it is not beneficial for him if Beastie knocks out Marine Lord. For now, for Linok, it is actually beneficial that Beastie is occupied with Marine Lord as much as possible. So he's going to use this opportunity and window to just sail towards Beastie's island, start destroying the docks, and essentially keep Marine Lord alive. Because the longer Marine Lord alive, the longer Beastie is occupied with him. Keep in mind that they are stacking up kills there, right? Because we did say if this goes to the hour mark, whoever has the most kills. I, I don't know if buildings count in some way as well, but my, my bigger concern here, I feel bad for Marine Lord. I don't know about you, but this just feels like watching two wolves fight over a slab of meat. <laughs> this is how I feel when I play FFAs. <laughs> you just get passed around. All right, I'm, I'm done with him. You can beat him up for five minutes. All right, I'll be back in 10. That's how it feels. Like it's the, the southern advance of the palace guard. He still hasn't answered. BC is always aggressive north side. Linok is at least now in 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 mobilizing the fleet for BC. Words are hard, I tell you. And he's going to shut down the trade because remember, like, you know, Marine Lord was the only one that knew about this before. Wait, no, no, Linok, tell me he does see it. Uh, he, he, he sees the trade. Like, he 100% okay. sees the trade. He has been destroying oh ships God. for a while there. I mean, it should be obvious for him that there is also trade here for BC. Yeah, as Kor is showing us, there are trade ships out there and. Keep in mind that on a map like Warring Islands or Archipelago, the resources are much more finite than it is on, let's say, Dry Arabia. You have way less wood to work with, way less gold to work with. So setting up trade early is vital, and Linok knows that. Linok knows that if he doesn't stop this, then, you know, there could be a chance for just you being outlasted when it comes to resources. But there is more important things to talk about. Indeed, another landing coming in here for Beastie Cutie, and most of his leftover wood is on the right side of his island. Yeah, but the issue of Linox landing here is, you know, Marine Lord, he kind of forgot to do that important thing called walling, as the Chinese. BC did. So he has very limited effect out of this play, unless he's able to move in with the Baochuans. And the problem is, because Marine Lord still isn't participating, like, actually, at this point, I wouldn't be willing to give him a participation ribbon if this is the type of tournament we're running here. It means that BC can now react and counter out the attack from Linox. Indeed, for the time being, it looks like Beastie is going to be able to hold this. And the thing is now, Marine Lord is so, so weak on water that Beastie can focus all his attention towards Linok, and he has to, because there are towers coming towards his island. For a long time, Beastie sort of neglected the danger that Linok poses on him. Now he can no longer neglect that, because Linok has become a force. He has probably been the most untouched player of the three, and now he's a real danger to Beastie's position. It's almost half an hour of this game. I can't believe as like a Romance of the Three Kingdoms nerd, as a Dynasty Warriors nerd, it on I only just dawned on me now that if we picked green instead of yellow, we could have like all three of the kingdoms. Yeah, true. This is three kingdoms indeed. Although my history knowledge is somewhat lacking, but I don't think that China had this much water in the era of the three kingdoms. Yeah, they, they did, but they kind of ignored it because they were more... <laughs> kind of focused on, I don't know, killing each other on land, which is, I, I like that from Linok, by the way. Round of applause, for, he's actually correctly role-playing what the Chinese would have done in the Civil Wars in this time. No naval, mainly um, just trying to get on land. So what you're telling is that the Chinese would have just lost like 50 villagers to nest of bees on the opponent's island? 
Have you never heard the Yellow Turban Rebellion? Yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate. But that's a Red Turban Rebellion, not the Yellow Turban one here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Beastie fairness, is the I only one that right can pull now, off the Yellow Turban Rebellion here. That's true. That's true. Linonk has to be woo, and they were pretty good with, with their ships, at least by my gaming standards. So, I'm not sure what Marine Lord's meant to be good at here. Like, the way he's camping inside his little home and never coming out, he is kind of a shoe in for like the Salsa experience, just guarding the Emperor at all times. So, by the way, I am outraged that we were willing to give different skins to the kings for different sieves, but we couldn't do something as simple as name the Chinese king the Emperor. That's true. I mean, what about the Mongol king then? Wouldn't he be named just the Khan? <laughs> There's going to be an argument over that with a certain other unit. Um, yeah, I, like, you, you get that feel. Or how about Mongols getting the Khan as their regicide unit in regicide games? That that would teach some pros without shaming them, at least from what we've seen this weekend so far, to appreciate their Khan more. Also, can I just you highlight so? how hilarious... <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Could I just highlight how hilarious it would be to look at a fat Khan on top of that poor little horse? Okay, I probably shouldn't say hilarious. That's the wrong choice of words. I feel bad for the horse, but it would be quite comedial when you consider how bulky those boys look. Yeah, I mean, these are definitely some big boys out there, but, you know, you could have a deck. You could have a deck that just makes them slimmer, make them fitter. Ah, yes, yes. For 50 gold, you can buy slim fast. Cracker of a deal. I'll take that any day of the week. Or if you run out of food in your kingdom entirely, then, I mean, he doesn't have anything to eat, so he might as well go slim. <laughs> that's, when okay, he eats, no, that's when he eats the Khan, and then there is only one Khan. There we go, we've solved the problem. It's just always civil wars, no matter what we're doing in this game mode. I, I think the overall conclusion here is that everyone should be very happy with the state of the game right now, and just be happy with the fact that we are not the game designers. Let's give some more bad ideas. <laughs> I'm up for it. We can just turn it into the, this whole situation. What if... Okay, here's an idea, right? Let, let's go steampunk here. What if there was a tech that allowed you to turn your warships into land ships? Little giant crawler spider legs come out and they just start going up on land like I'm in a Will Smith Wild Wild West movie. But where is my historical accuracy? <laughs> I think we just, like skipped past the historical accuracy with with uh, the boom ships alone actually I, I think that back and forth already screwed us over before we just get into why fire lances are ridiculously more effective than any other person holding a tiny torch now you have asked previously what marine lord could do and the answer Wait. is that he might go in for a king snipe and Lenok might not be <laughs> expecting this because they have been toying with marine lord for the last like 15 minutes they didn't think he was a danger but one thing Marine Lord has is a truckload of bombards, and that king is residing in that tiny little village. And Marine Lord, he can afford treason. He's now jumping out. And honestly, you might not even go for the king. You could just go for the complete destruction of Lenok here. Well, you, you can throw the buildings, but remember, if all the landmarks are gone, like he still lives, you have to get the king. The king must die. That is all that matters. I don't care if a million peasants have to die in the process. That still won't be enough to get him to concede. If you want Lee dead, Find the head of this civilization. Where is he actually? Uh, is he gone? Where is... I, there is no way he's this fast. He can't be there. Dude. I, I think he's still Dude, in the I, village. He has to be. It's, it's not showing though. He's not there. King? He's hiding. Wait, wait. Cl click the icon on the left side. Click the icon on the left side. I don't need to play your games, Lenok. If we click the icon on the left side of the screen, we can just find him. No. Nope. where is he? What? Oh, he's running. he's running. He's making a run for it. <laughs> well, it's an overstatement to say he's running, but I mean, he's trotting to the right side. <laughs> C can we just highlight that king again? I okay, th this is terrible roleplay right now. Did that look like a, a Chinese king to you, or did that look like the Middle East skin? It 100% did not look like a Chinese king. I'm also fairly convinced that this guy has a sword on his side yet he's got zero attack most likely so it's not like he's gonna be capable of fighting back the best armor in the kingdom and all you could get for it was free armor free <laughs> jesus and 200 hp <laughs> it's, it's not like a royal knight right he needs his own bodyguard I think, okay, like, here's my idea for a change to regicide. Like, I don't know oh, if no. anyone's played the game Fat Princess. So here we go, back in the design. Fat Princess is a game where like, it's capture the flag with a princess. You can feed her cake, 
to make it harder for your opponents to take back because they move slower. My idea is that the king should start off really fast, but as you have him feast on more food, he becomes fat and slower. Well, why would you ever give him food then? Because like, if he gets cornered, he's gonna have 12,000 health. Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, looks like Lenok is out here for revenge, though. He might actually clean this up. Lenok is going to survive for the time being. He will lose a ton, but his yep, king is going to ball. live. He's going to clean this up, and now he's angry at Marine Lord. And Beastly's probably sitting back laughing at this, and he's like, okay, you guys can just fight with each other because I'm going to trade. Exactly. And here's the problem right now. Like, unless you hit the hour mark, it's very likely Beastie wins at this rate. Now, this can be beneficial for Lenok and Marine Lord if they keep killing each other because they'll accrue more points and Beastie hasn't killed anything in a while. But with the dents they're putting in each other's economies, at this rate, Beastie could easily clean them both up in the next 15 to 20 minutes. I actually wonder how kills are counted for units that cost multiple population spots because that's an interesting thing for us to assess. As you pointed out, Beast didn't do that much killing. Most of the killing that he has done were ships. Ships that mm -hmm. technically are one unit apiece, True. but cost multiple population spots. Whereas if you take a look at Marine Lord, if you take a look at Lenok, they have been fighting against Fire Lancers. There is a Palace Guard versus Spearman fight over here. So numerically, they are killing more units. So the question becomes how valuable those Bao Shuans are that Beast is sunk when it comes to the kill count. Okay, I've got one word for you, four syllables, that will explain why Beastie, if he's fighting constantly, will get better trades and a higher kill count. Ready? CGQT. Yes and no. I agree to a certain extent, because he's been using a lot of Siege, but he has also lost a tremendous amount of Fire Lancers. He has lost like 40, yeah. 50 Fire Lancers, and in a battle where we didn't have a ton of land units clashing, that's actually quite a lot of casualties, and remember, he tried to snipe the building. It's not like he killed units in return. If you take a look at Marine Lord and Lenok, they have been trading units on land. I don't know. It's true, but like the, the, the thing is, like if he switches up now and they continue like this slow, like he can get good trades if they come to him. Yeah. Like, that's if, the if weird he does part, it now, like, sure. Like Beastie, this play with Fire Lancers, it's not like him. The only time he ever does this is in free for all type games. And yeah, this is this is actually a free-for-all, but it's just not that type. It's not that style that allows you to just flood through a million Fire Lancers and GG instantly. The crazy part to think about is actually, I, I would say at this stage, Lenok maybe has the most kills. Like, he, he got the better Bowchad trades Likely. with both players. He killed a lot of the land eco on the edge of Marine Lord's base, and he just wiped an assault army that Marine Lord put into his own. And that wasn't the first fight that he took with Palace Guards as well. He took some fights on Marine Lord's Island. And the thing here is that the Palace Guards train, uh, trade extremely well against the Spearmen. So if you compare the other fights, as you said, Beast is Fire Lancers, they don't do much against the Spearmen. But you look at Palace Guards, those are very favorable trades for Lenok. So that's probably the reason why he is leading in the KD department right now. Who do you think's in second? Actually, something just popped into my mind. Remember the time where Lenok landed on Beastie's island? He lost quite a lot of villagers, so yep. Beastie does have quite a lot of kills here as well. It's actually fascinating to think about the fact that the players could be very close in kill count right now. And that's what Marine Lord is playing for. He's essentially half that you see, he's at 113 population. But yeah. if I he survives until the end, he might not be the last player because if his kill count is better than at least one other player, he's going to get the second place. I think that's why they're not land pushing anymore, is they realized they couldn't end it fast. Like that experimentation, that was an experimentation by Beastie with the Fire Lancers. He wanted to see if he could get a quick kill, and when he couldn't, he realized that trying to do it again and again could put him behind Marine Lord. And then God knows what Lenok is doing off the back of that, right? So like, it's not just you trading out. Like, if you think about the normal logic of free-for-alls, you go into a fight and the person not participating is winning. That's yes. a big issue. But now you have a bigger issue because like, if you are fighting and you're not getting good trades, like you're giving more value over to the defender and they're gonna be heading on the kills. And when the hour mark hits, boom, you still lose. Exactly, so you either need to be 100% sure that you can finish off the opponent or you need to be very careful when it comes to throwing easy to kill units at the enemy. Landing with bombards is probably fine because these are hard to kill and they don't really count for a lot of kills. 
but you don't want to land with spearmen, for example. Palace Guards, borderline over here, you see they are running into the Bombard Tower fire. It's only going to work out if you can trade it off to a, a decent amount of villagers being killed. And I'm not sure if that's going to be the case here for Leenok. You see, Bombards are rolling up here for Marine Lord. He always has Bombard Towers. Oh God. And in return, Leenok is now going to get his island shelled by some Baoshuans. And remember, Leenok has lost a lot of production buildings back at home. He might be the most vulnerable player right now, not even Marine Lord. Yeah, Marine Lord right now looking like the big Bombard Warrior here. As he's got way too many cannons to be repelled. And remember, those cannons are good at holding back the bow chance as well. Like, you, you can't easily get in. Oh, the king. To he's get out. In. Beastie. Oh, oh, what? What is oh, the king? Oh, he's out. And there is he's nowhere to garrison. He's got vision. That's a death, that's a death king. It has to be a death he's king. Dead. Hits oh, in. Palace guards Range close the by. Towers. The palace guard. Oh. They save. Palace guards saving the king. I mean, fitting for their name. They guard the palace. They save the emperor. Oh my goodness, that was extremely close. If it was for one or two more Fire Lancers, that would have been a dead ruler. Still though, can you stop this one right now? That's the question, because sure thing, you saved the king, but did you save the kingdom? Would you reward these pass guard or fire them for even letting an assassin into the, the castle? I would just charge into a bunch of nest of bees with them, accompanied by their brothers who are just now being born. <laughs> Lessons for not guarding your king better. Good job, you guys done great. Now prove that you are great and kill all the army that's just encroaching upon our territory. But my lord, there's not many of us left. Well, there'll be even less left soon, so you might as well get to it. Let's speed this up. We've only got 19 minutes. Trade out well or I'm gonna lose anyway. Indeed, I'm actually curious at Linux resources. He's floating a ton of food, but housing is an issue. Remember, those Baoshuans, they are very heavy on the population cost. And if you take a look on the waterfront, Linux has a massive fleet. But if he can't take down these bombards and the nest of bees, it won't matter. Because he needs population space for land units. And this is why he's charging in here with the ships. He needs to lose a couple of ships here. And here come the palace guards actually getting a really good fight here. What? The ne nest of bees? Nice micro. On a coffee break. <laughs> okay, we'll finally notice what's happening here. Splash damage coming out. And this is unfortunate for Beastie. Like, he would have been able to get some reasonable trades against the Bouchards if he was able to hold on land. This build up of a base is not going to work on his own. In fact, the best move for Beastie now is to hit the delete key so he doesn't give kills over. Yeah, that's exactly it. Like, keep in mind that those villagers will be slain. Siege weapons also went down over here, and only a handful of Palace Guards lost their lives. So, at the end of the day, this is a good trade here for Lino. You know what? More of them deserve to die. They almost let their king die, okay? The, the punishments have to be hard here, Lytical. You know, the Palace Guard, they're meant to be the elitist of the elitists. They almost lost their king. In fact, they might still, because I'm pretty sure that there's no monk to heal up that injured king. And kings don't automatically heal, unlike, let's say, Khans. So... Those kings, or at least that king, is gonna be at 80 HP for a long, long time, unless there is a monk to heal it up. Now, if if you're Leenok in this situation, do you consider just sneaking your king across the Marine Lord's Island so you can just stick on top of him and get more kills? Because now your goal surely has to be surviving, right? Like, you don't look like you can win from here. But if you get to the hour mark, you can maybe still come better than third. This is a very, very interesting question that you're asking me here, because indeed, there is definitely some upside in sneaking your stuff to Marine Lord's Island. On the other hand, Marine Lord has a ton of bombards, so this only works out if Marine Lord doesn't spot you, and it feels like an extreme gamble, and look at Marine Lord now, he wants to kill. Yeah. He wants to go for certain, because one thing that we need to keep in mind is that the players, they are unaware of the kill counts. They don't know how many kills Wait. each player had. So you're going Wait. for a kill. Marine Lord. Oh, he's going to sneak this past. Look at where the fleets are right now. Beasties is coming towards Marine Lord's base, and Linox is heading up the central straight towards Beasties. He's going to sneak by completely unnoticed at this rate because they're getting ready to engage on the northern side, and it looks like Beastie at best is going to get an assist as he opens the way for Marine Lord to go for the kill. Smart play here by Marine Lord, and do you keep something in mind. Marine Lord, at least in Linox's eyes, is a wounded player, someone heavily damaged. Uh, if you would ask Linok right now what Marine Lord's army is looking like, he would probably say, oh yeah, just a handful of bombards, that's it. He does not expect 
six transport ships full of units to flood his island. And the key thing here is that because of that, he focuses Wait, on what? the bigger price. That is Beastie QD. Oh, this is gonna get spotted. If Linox he sold this, this could out. be game changing. But Marine Lord actually hung Garrison there. I don't know if that was a misclick or what. He shifted a bunch out and then shifted back in. And he's changed his mind. He's backing up entirely, missing he's out scared. the opportunity to go for the jugular. And it's gonna allow enough time for Linox to get back down here. He's scared about Linox fleet. He's probably like, okay, Linox spotted me. I cannot risk my entire army getting intercepted by the Baoshuans. So just dump everything. Every single piece of your plan is going down the drain here for a time being. Oh, it looks like we do have a bit of a traffic jam over here. Looks like those Wait. cannons are once again trying to embark on a journey. One has to oh. wonder what Beastie has on the water towards Marine Lord's Island because technically you could jump on Marine Lord with this. Uh-oh, that could be ugly. No, no, no. He's come down the center. BC's gonna fight with Lenox. He's gonna force a fight here because he thinks he's trading again. And the rush in the center island as they're gonna clash here is gonna draw attention. And Lenox, in a tough situation, won't have to fall for any attempt towards the northern side because if he shifts out of position now, Marine Lord could double down and now go for that rush. A lot of kills going in here for Beastie QD. He's wiping out most of those palace guards. That's a very favorable trade. But guess what? Now Clock Tower Bombard's setting up here and you're gonna think twice with those Baoshuans before engaging Clock Tower Bombards. So for now, Linox is going to pull back, especially considering the fact that Beastie is not pushing him. And you know, you look at that timer, we're, we're, <laughs> we're getting close. Just over 13 minutes away from having to say, nope, put your keyboards down, your mice down, stop fighting. We just need to see who has the most kills now. Who came last in that department? And you know, thinking about the way this has been playing out so far, Marine Lord hasn't really been hemorrhaging that many troops anymore. Linox definitely took heavy hits, but he took heavy hits from both players. It feels like in some ways, like Linox, although he sunk a lot of ships, I wouldn't be surprised if Marine Lord is in second and, and Beastie possibly now from first. Yeah, the thing is that ever since Marine Lord got heavily damaged at the beginning, he has been barely losing any units. So. His casualties are rather low. His kill count is not spectacular, but every single trade that he has taken is pretty efficient. And I feel like, as you said, the thing here is that he lost a very few units, but he also had quite a lot of kills because there were a lot of intruders on his island. <laughs> is it me to the palace guard? Like, like just watching <laughs> them run. It looks like, it genuinely looks like a, an RTS from two the 2000s with his animations. Like, yeah, we've got like five different pixel art designs that we switch between <laughs> as they run. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like we're getting to that late game stage where we might have a bit of a lag issue. Something that can happen in these modded games, especially especially when you have a ton of ships, ton of units on the battlefield. And now, once again, an attempt being made over here by Marine Lord. Look at that, the Baoshan is essentially trailblazing the way here. He's scouting ahead. But the Navy is back at home for Lenok. It's going to get traded off. I and think there is going to be sufficient left here, though. You yeah, will have yeah, enough left he here for Lenok. If he can sneak Ooh. around, and that's what he's doing, because if he gets on land, he can backstab the entire fleet. And right now, BC is still distracting. He doesn't even know what he's about to allow Marine Lord to do. But there's a forest here. Uh-oh, this could be terrible. He's in. Doesn't matter. If you if you're on Garrison, the bombards instantly unload. They just need to instantly target them as they're coming in, because the bow chats are too slow. And here it is. Insta deploy, insta fire opened up. Defenses are going to start falling fast, and this is where your fleet is going to sink alongside it. Lenok won't even be able to pull back quick enough here, and it looks like Marine Lord might be the Kingslayer. Indeed, Bombar is now setting up here, sinking what's left of Lenok's navy, but the concern is going to be the king residing in that village, still at 80 HP, and the king is very slow. The palace guards are really fast. Like, we are talking about fast infantry units over here. Bombard's heading that way. King is on the run. Palace guards will have to catch him. You probably just want to split your palace guards, cover the entire island, and you can see Marine Lord's POV. He knows the king is running, and it's blatantly obvious the king is going to make a run towards the east, Oh, the market might even block him. I run, feel like Leok is out. Run, run, oh. fat boy, run. Where is he at? You're about he ran to squeal like market. a piggy. <laughs> squeal like a piggy. Gone. <laughs> Leok is out. Marine Lord secures spot number two at minimum for himself. But now the question becomes, as you said, what's the kill count with 11 minutes left on the timer for us before the one hour mark? I actually wonder I, whether Marine Lord is leading in kills. And yeah. keep in mind, the players don't know who's leading. 
So the players will try to finish this before the one hour mark. And now Beastie was waiting for this. He's an opportunist, ladies and gentlemen. He was waiting for Linux to be killed by Marine Lord. And now he's landing with no less than 67 Fire Lancers. He's out here for blood. The corpse isn't even cold yet, Lydical. Can't we at <laughs> least attend Lenox's funeral first? I heard there was going to be a performing jester, a big cake. No, no. Instead, Beastie's hungry for something else. And I know what some people are thinking. That was a very underwhelming King Death. I agree. I, I've said this already. Devs, if you find this recording, add the giant explosions. All right? AoE2 has it, and it makes me jealous. Yeah, I mean, you know, giant explosions, mushroom clouds, nuclear effect, like nuclear winter after a king dies, everything, right? <laughs> like, what's the logic there? My, my king has a lot of gas. He hasn't farted in <laughs> um, 42 years. I mean, one thing that's going to fire are these fire lancers, though. They're heading straight towards the king. And now you're facing a dilemma. If you jump out of the keep, mm. the fire lancers will insta-kill yep. you. But you stay inside, if the keep goes down, you are for sure dead. So, you, all you can do here is... Blow. Yeah, you can. Marino's you have blow. to keep that castle alive. If the castle yeah, goes down, this game is over for Marine Lord. Okay, Village is coming out, trying to get the repairs in, but the torch damage is too, too high. Too late. Marine Lord, he only just noticed that he knows it's but too late. the king? You gotta fix the king here. There it is! Beastie cleans it up. It is going to be Beastie first, Marine Lord second, and Leenot Pepe hands him because he gets no moolah whatsoever. Uh, we are going to take a look at the final kill count over here, although it's not going to matter for us. Beastie Cutie taking the number one spot, Marine Lord coming in second, and Leenot coming in third. But if it came down to kills, Leenot would have won 265 kills. Uh -huh. Beastie, the lowest amount of kills, and that's why he had to go for the kill. He couldn't yep. count on the kill count. He had to go for the kill, and he did just that.